Okay, so now how many people here have run an operation on your desktop, some geoprocessing task, gone to lunch, and come back and it's still running? <laughs> right? Hopefully it didn't crash, right? <laughs> and then it how many people it have done do that, Adam? You're right. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. <laughs> how many people have left on a Friday and it's running and come back on Monday and it's still running? <laughs> Okay, that's hardcore, right? <laughs> that so is. guess what? You have really large data, right? <laughs> if that if you raise your hand. So there's you know, you hit you can easily in any organization you can get lots of data that really makes um, it hard to actually analyze it because it's so large, right? Especially if you're leveraging a single desktop or even a single server. So what we've been working very hard on at 10.5 is some debuting some new tools to come up with and allow you to work with just about any size data, as large as it can get, right? And so the way we do this is by spreading the, the computer work across multiple machines. So that's called parallelization, parallelized uh, analytics. And we've got two different ways to do it, raster, raster and vector. So the raster tool is inside of Image Server. So Image Server is a product that's been around for a while. But at 10.5, it gains a new capability called raster analytics that allows you to really analyze really huge raster data sets. Right? So if you've got Image Server right now, if you, if you upgrade it to 10.5, you'll get raster analytics inside of that. The other is a new tool, a new um, product called GeoAnalytics Server, and that deals with vector work. Okay? In addition to the software, we've also designed a new data schema called a spatio-temporal data store, which is just fun to say. <laughs> um, and so what that allows is this very fast... Um, analysis and viewing of data that's this large, right? So we can look at data over time, really, really large data, like millions and billions of records and fields, okay? So what we're going to do is show you some of these new large data analysis capabilities. And the first one we're going to show is the, is the raster side of things. So again, inside of Image Server at 10.5 is a capability called raster analytics. And we're going to do some impervious surface extraction off of imagery. Um, most cities and counties do this for stormwater billing because if you more impervious surface, the more runoff you're creating. Um, and so we want to bill the people that have more impervious surface more than the people that don't. Also, we need that information to try to figure out what improvements we need to make to our infrastructure because if we've got more impervious surface coming in an area, we need to beef up the infrastructure to be able to handle it all. And in fact, back in, I think, 2013, mm -hmm. we did this exact same demo using the old capability um, of extracting the impervious surfaces out of imagery, but now we're going to do it again, this time in raster analytics, and we're using an online imagery service. So I'll let Harry yeah. tell more about it. All right. Thanks, Adam. Um, so how many of you collect imagery like every two or three years? You're part of a consortium or something to do that. Okay. So if you've ever wanted to get updated imagery more frequently, uh, we do have a business partner, Hexagon, that provides an image service. And we're going to be doing the analysis today on an image service. So the imagery is not downloaded and installed on my laptop, okay? So they provide updated imagery on a regular basis. We're in the Palm Springs area right here on, the, on my map, and their population is below 50,000. So there's only one foot resolution, but if your area is above 50,000, then it's six inch resolution. And it's very affordable. You can find it in the ArcGIS marketplace called the Hexagon Image Program. Mm -hmm. So um, what I want to do is extract impervious surface. I want to identify where's all the grass and the shrubs, and then where's all the buildings and the concrete. So to do that, I'm enabling my uh, ArcGIS Pro project to use raster analytics. And I can tell that it's using raster analytics because under the analysis tab, under the portal section, raster analysis is enabled. So all of these different functions and patterns are using raster analytics. If I run them, it's going to be ran on servers that happen to be in the Amazon cloud right now to do the analysis. It won't be running on my laptop. So under the imagery tab, we have this classification wizard. Now, can anybody tell me why this wizard is grayed out? Please raise your hand. You, you said no license? No, mm -hmm. I actually do have license. But if you were going to say, I didn't click on the layer in my contents, <laughs> then, you would, then you would win the, the image or ArcGIS imagery book. So there you go. You got the book for imagery. So because remember, ArcGIS Pro is a context sensitive application. <laughs> so everybody deserves to win something here. Yeah. So, so once I click on that layer, now my tool becomes active. I want to take a moment and talk about this wizard classification because this tool has been around for a while, but we've improved upon it. So when you use raster analytics with this uh, tool, this wizard, it will be running on those other servers. So 
I'm able to classify in two different ways, a supervised and an unsupervised. Today, we're going to be using a supervised approach, which gives me more control over the different uh, dialog boxes in this particular wizard. Um, there's also two ways to classify our imagery. We can do a pixel base or an object base. A pixel base is going to look at every single pixel in the imagery, and if it's green, it's going to say green. If it's brown, it's going to be dirt. If it's blue, it's going to be water. But the problem with this is you get what they call salt and pepper effect. And the best example I have is my dog. So I have a green grass, but in some places it's not so green because of my dog. Well, if I was doing a pixel-based approach, those non-green spots may be considered uh, earth, bare earth or concrete because of their color, when in fact it's still actually grass. So with an object-based approach, we're going to look at not only one pixel, but all the surrounding pixels and determine what, what object should they be, like a grass or a tree or so forth. Okay, now here's another tip if you're going through this wizard for the first time. This little tiny down arrow next to the folder, you can use a default schema. And if you don't have one, I recommend just using the default one. So a default schema is going to tell you what are the objects you're looking for. Are you looking for trees? Are you looking for asphalt? Are you looking for buildings? Are you looking for lawn chairs? So that's what the schema tells us. Now, we've created one for the demonstration purposes of um, identifying an impervious surface. So I will go and grab that. And then just hit next. So because we're using raster analytics, don't ever be afraid to adjust your spectral detail or your spatial detail. And what these little slider bars are going to do is identify different things on my map. So watch what happens when I hit the preview button. So in this area next to the pool, you can see that there are some objects that are these white patches. If I use the L button, you can see that those are the lawn chairs. Watch what happens if I increase my spatial or spectral detail. Now we've identified not only more lawn chairs, but even the shadow of a lawn chair. You can even see we've identified different components or different parts of the pool deck as a different object because their color's a little off. So you have the ability to adjust these settings to figure out what objects on your map you want to classify. And one of the best cases I've heard of using this at a high detail like this is tree identification. Because a pine tree is a different color green than a maple tree. A Douglas fir is a different color green than um, a birch. And that's what we can do. So I'll, I'll go ahead and just slide this back down to like five, and we'll use this in the analysis. So now that I, I've identified the different objects on my map, I need to tell this wizard what is grass, what is a pool, and so forth. So because I chose my schema, I have these different categories available to, available to me. So when I select grass, and then my selection tool, and click on my map, you'll see I'm not selecting an individual pixel. I'm selecting an object, and this is what that object-based classification does for us. So I can just say that's grass, this is grass, and the darker green is grass. And then I will merge these all together into one category. Um, here's a great example of, of, of water. This is a pool, but there's different colors of blue depending upon the depth. So in this example, you know, I want to make sure I pick all the different blues and then combine them together so that we know they're all water. And then for vegetation other, these are the trees. And here's another great example. So this, this tree right here is a different color than this tree over here and this one right here. So I can just group these together as well. Now we'll move on to our impervious surface. Uh, here's asphalt. We'll just grab the different color asphalts, combine those, and we'll do structure orange. So this is a good example, too, because this is a peaked roof. So one half of the structure has a lighter color than the other half. So I can just select these. That was not me. <laughs> or me. And then combine these together. And then we go to next. Now, I could run this analysis. And this would take about four and a half, five minutes to do on this whole entire Palm Springs area. But I've already taken the time to do that. So I'm just going to show you what the results of this uh, look like. So based upon the classification, what we came up with was this right here. 
So you can see that the different buildings have the different colors. The um, grasses have all been classified as green. And we use some symbology and components of the wizard to actually determine what's impervious and what's non-impervious. So here, here's the deal. Just using the imagery, we can see that there's some need for improvement because the shadow right here on this tree blocks the concrete from being identified because it turned out to be a different color. So we can always go back and fine tune this to fix that. So once we have this to show impervious and non-impervious, all we did was some spatial overlays and we come up with something that looks like this. So what this map is showing us is every single parcel. And when I click on a parcel, I can see that 51% of the area is designated as impervious. So if I use my appearance tab, my swipe tool, and turn off this go like that, we can now see each of the parcels below in that the calculation looks somewhat correct. So if I again click on this parcel here, 74% is impervious. And then use my swipe tool. You can see that the majority of that parcel does have concrete on there. So this is a really quick and a really easy way to identify objects on a map. Now again, if you don't have terabytes and terabytes of imagery, that's cool. You can still use this image classification. There's no need for raster analytics to use this image classification. But if you have years and years of imagery sitting around and you want to analyze it, then raster analytics would be a better approach most likely because you can then parallelize all that processing off to additional servers. And the cool thing about it too is that, again, imagery is expensive. The more data you can extract out of it, the better. Is you know, Since it only took four and a half minutes, mm -hmm. it's like if you did something wrong, you can redo it really quickly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and not have to worry about it. Um, the other cool thing is, is that was only using a single server. So that was using one four core server in the Amazon cloud. It did not go across three or four or five right. servers, but you could have done that if you needed to. Okay. All right, so that's raster analytics. So it allows us to analyze large, high-resolution raster data, dramatically reducing your processing time. Uh, again, extract more value out of your imagery. And again, uh, in addition to your own imagery, you can look out. There are premium image data services available, like the Hexagon one. If you want more information about it, just look it up on the ArcGIS Marketplace.